Hello friends. Today is Saturday, February the 5th, and we are here at Crane's Snowmobile Show at 172 East Main Street in Lancaster, New Hampshire. It's well below zero, probably 15 below or so. It's not as windy as yesterday, but there's still a breeze. Uh, I was talking to Paul Crane yesterday on the phone. He said the show must go on regardless of the weather, and as you can see, it is. We've got only a fraction of the turnout that we normally have. Uh, needless to say, the people who are here are hardcore and serious about it. So uh, let's walk around and uh, meet some of the people. I see a few people that I know. We're going to walk around here and say hello. We're here at Crane Snowmobile Museum, by the way. There's over 100 vintage snowmobiles inside the museum. And we've got the exhibitor sleds outside. How you doing? Good. Go ahead. Yeah, I can love these tropical breezes, huh? Yeah. Snow row. I don't think I've ever seen one of these. Do you have sleds here today? Huh? Do you have sleds here today? Oh, nice. Yeah. I have to get him to talk those up. Yeah. So this must be an early scorpion. I'm going to put a shadow on it here. Yeah, very, very cool. Remember these Polaris TCs? These were advertised that you could put them in, in the back of a station wagon. Kind of a, not a mini size like a kitty cat, but not a full size sled either. It's kind of something in between. Uh, very nice. I almost think this is Jason's trailer. This must be one of his. I know he likes Polaris. Let's see what it says on here. Oh, we got a snowmobile going by. Uh, Jeff Moore owns this from upstate New York. Cool deal. Yeah, I don't see these very often, these Blair's TCs. And then we got an old Johnson. Uh, Larson, I'm sorry. My apologies. This Larson is made by Polaris Industries from a 66 Mustang chassis. Just made a new reformed cowl and painted this color in Larson decals for Larson Boat Company. Uh, one year only for this sled model. Polaris also did this again in 1968 from a Colt chassis. Very interesting. Interesting they've got that brace by the ski spindle. I'll get in close on that here in just a second. But uh, I also want to see that cowling, that custom cowling that he's talking about in the note there. Check out, they've got kind of a brace around the ski spindle there. Very interesting. Very cool. Very cool. Hey, how's it going? What's going on? Not much. Good to see you guys. What's going on, man? How are you, Mike? Nice to see you. Happy New Year Making and happy all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no gloves today. No. Do you guys have sleds here today? No. Yeah. No. no. Yeah, it's damn cold. I'm huh? gonna do it. We did Rutland one year when it was like this, and it was no fun. Yeah. You mind if I have you on camera? Cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah. No Crazy. And for the people viewing, Mark is a regular at most of these shows. Him and his son and grandsons show up at most of these shows with sleds, mostly Articats, and they take a lot of trophies home. Yeah, it's pretty brutal today, though. It sure is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that wind hasn't died down yet. Oof, yeah. But, oh, I've got something for you. A DVD and an Amsoil catalog. Oh, thank you. In fact, let me give you two. One for Lucas as well. Perfect. Thank yeah, you. thank you. I appreciate that. Cause you've been on camera with me many times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep, we're off. We're actually going to the 73 650 Thunder yet. Really? Yeah. Similar to this? One year newer. Okay, yeah. So it's got the wedge shape. Yeah. And it was, we traced it back to racing at Eagle River in 73. Really? Yeah. So it's got some history to it. It's got some race history to it. We know the driver's name and all that good stuff. Wonderful. Uh, so yeah, we only started with the tunnel and the skid, and we're at the point now where we've got all the parts, so yeah. it's going to be a full, full restoration. Nice. 
That's cool. Yeah, probably. I can't wait to see that. You have to keep me in the loop on that. Yeah, yeah. We'll post some pictures. And I think next week we might get the powder coating the tunnel. Yeah. Sweet. The skis are all done. The skid is all done. Yeah. But next year it'll be be ready. I hope. Sweet. Yeah, you start bringing it out to shows. Yeah, yeah. For the next yeah. season, yeah. And maybe even the um, the fall show in Bethlehem, with any luck. You we think should be, be ready by one. then. Yeah. We should be at that. One. So similar to this, but a year newer. Very cool. Now, being a 650, it wouldn't be a little six, a single cylinder. It'd be a big honking engine under there, huh? Yeah, it's a twin, and it's yeah. offset to the side, just yeah. like that. Uh, the hood is more of a wedge shape. Yep. Yeah. This is Bud Gordon's sled, by the way. He brings this to a lot of shows. Cool, yeah, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, yeah, we'll share it with you. Maybe we can get you to do a podcast on it. Yeah, absolutely, love to do that. Yeah. Bring it on live. Yeah. Definitely. Ooh, that wood is something. Yeah. It's taking my breath away. I think there's a couple shows this weekend, next weekend, right? Yeah, uh, Newport Center, Vermont. Newport Center, then there's yeah. one in Andover, too. Oh, really? New Hampshire? Yeah. Wow. Which one are you going to? I'm probably going to go up to the Derby one. Yeah, Race me too. that one, so I'm going to go. Good. Yeah, I'm going there too. Yeah. It's close for you, right? Yeah. Oh, very close. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be doing video over there. Yeah. That should be a good show. I had a nice turnout last year. It was this cold there last year. Yeah. And there was plenty of people showed up, and it's right on the snowmobile trail, so a lot of trail riders see it, and they stop and want to check out the see what's going on, you know? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I plan on being there. Sweet. Well, cool. Well, I'm going to walk around here right. and see the sights, and but it's good to see you. I'll catch up with you inside. Mike. Yes. Thank you. Mike, how's it going? How you doing? Oh, it's Bud. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? I should have known with a snow jet hat. <laughs> Sorry, I got my <laughs> hand going. Cool. Yeah. Bud Gordon. I got my face covered up, I know. Yeah. <laughs> kind of cold out here. Yeah, it is a nippy, nippy uh, day. Yeah. Now, this is your sled. Yeah, that's my 72. Sweet. It's re been restored. That one was run hard, put away wet years ago. I rescued it from the basically trash. <laughs> wow. It was bad. It was real bad. It sure looks nice today. Thank you. And you've had you have you have this at a lot of shows. I have. I it's I a nice finished that one probably ten years ago. Wow. Yeah. Nice. And you're doing good? You're having a good winter? Yeah. Good. So far. I mean if we, if we could get some snow that we could keep and ride, yeah. it would be nice. I was out in Bear Brook yesterday with a friend, uh, last weekend with a friend, and uh, all the water bars were horrible. Oh, really? The snow itself was good, but it's just, you couldn't go anywhere. It was just, you know, bare ground everywhere, the water bars. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it was, at least we were riding. Yeah. You know, it was something. For sure. Yeah. And How things are going. You been riding? Not at all. Not even yard riding. I keep no. meaning to, but so much going on. Yeah. Because now we've got snow, I could yard ride if I wanted to. I'm going to get this going by. But uh, I've just been too busy. Yeah. Got things going good with it. That's what I like about this show. You can see them all. <laughs> yes. Nothing's too fancy. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. And uh, things going good with the museum? Yeah, we've been doing some renovation. Well, I've been doing some renovation work there. We're building some shelves to get sleds up off of the uh, off the floor. Yeah. To get a little bit better organized. Uh, sure. Because we've got the rally coming up in a couple weeks. Yeah. So uh, trying to get some of that stuff done. Uh, we've had an issue with the chimney. We're not going to be able to use the fireplace. Oh wow. Uh, again this year. So uh, we've had a couple inspections. We're trying to get an estimate for for rebuilding it. But, sure. Uh, that's not going to happen. Not in time for the show. Yeah. yeah. Well, because that's got to go through the state. Sure. And, uh, you know how that goes. Yeah. We might see it in 2030. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It takes a while for federal money or state money. I'm sorry. Yeah, state money. Uh, Crazy. So well, you know, we'll see. But we got the rally. It's looking good. And as long as we don't get too much warm, at least we'll be able to do the ride this year. Yes. Because we got a couple of loops there that were, were very good. There's no water in them. Nice. So that'll, that'll be nice for people to be able to ride this year. Do you want to do a shameless plug for the ride and for the show and for the museum? Or? What's that? Do you want to do a shameless plug for the ride and the show well, and the museum? It's, it's two weeks. It's on February 19th, Sunday. Um, we got the Glasstown Club cooking the food again, and of course we've got our usual contest. We've got the Lao Pipe, 
uh, for different uh, stock, twin, single, um, awards for each of those categories. We're going to have the slow uh, sled contest and the one pull contest. So, you know, come on down and have some fun. Uh, you know, ride around, check out the museum, see what's going on. So that's, yeah, that's uh, February 19th. That's Sunday, two weeks. Yeah. And the uh, show runs from uh, 9 to 2. And that's at Bearbrook Museum? At Bearbrook, yep. At and that's museum. Allenstown, New Hampshire? Yes, it is. Look yep. for it on a map. Yeah. Or on a Google Google search, you can yep. find the museum and the and the, the state park. Yeah, you just go on. Uh, you can go on our website, NewHampshireSnowmobileMuseum.com. Yeah. Everything's on. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Sweet It'll deal. Be a good time. For sure. Yeah. Are there any notable sleds here today? Or? Bear Notch a couple of weeks ago. Really? How was that? We had about 40 sleds show up. Yeah. It was good. It, we got lucky. We had just enough snow uh, the day before. They got out and groomed, and it was beautiful. Oh, wonderful. The only problem that we had was you couldn't use the railroad track, so we couldn't do the big loop. Yeah. But we did a short ride up the Notch Road and back, and uh, we, when we came back, we picked up the stragglers. They came in late, yeah. and we went over to the restaurant to eat our lunch, and then we went on our next ride. Yeah. So we we did about a 62-mile day. Wow, that's a good loop. Everybody had a great time. Good. I want to thank the people that showed up. It was fun. Yeah. It was a fun time. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, cool. Cool, yeah. Now, is this your Kawasaki and Snowjet yeah. as well? These are mine, too. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> that one came out of New York. That one had only 600 miles on it when I got it. Wow. I bought it with an intriguer for him and his daughter to ride, and she really had no interest in it. And yeah. So he parked them out in the backyard on pallets under a tarp, and it was in pretty sad shape when I got it, but it cleaned up nice. <coughs> yep. So I'm happy with it. Wonderful. The snow jet was built out of old, old stock parts. Really? Nice. Yeah, a buddy of mine found the chassis in the rafters at Snowcats over in Vermont. Yeah. So he brought it home to his friend who was a dealer down in Connecticut, uh, and they picked stuff off the shelf and put it together. That actually, the engine in it was mine, and I gave it to him. Uh, he rebuilt it. That's the only thing on it that's not new, is that engine. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's cool. Gotta love a sl sled with a story. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. The sled that never was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's cool. Well, cool. Yeah, I'm going to walk around a little bit, yeah. but I'll catch up with you, man. Yeah, yeah good seeing nice you. see you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's Paul Crane over there in the green coat. Catch up with him in a little while. Got a cool old Panther. Probably 71, 72, I'm thinking, with a cutter. Oh, man, it is cold. That wind is raw. Oh, another Panther, too. It's probably 73 or 74, maybe. Oh, purple power lube. Roto lube. Hey, good. How are you? Are these yours? Uh, these are. Cool, yeah. You feel like talking them up on camera? Yeah, no problem. Just see what my name is and then just talk them up? And... Yeah, this is a, that's a 96 Thundercat. Yeah. It got uh, 600 and maybe 70 miles on it. Wow. Original. Yeah. It's, uh, these are all uh, <laughs> factory out of cat skis and stuff back in the day. They, you know, they had options and stuff. Yeah. Like the ski loops, the skis, <coughs> uh, you know, the handle grips, yeah. the little side piece, the brake lever and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a, a 68 Panther. Right there. 68 Panther, wow. Uh, single cylinder, yeah. uh, 300 hertz motor in it. 300 hertz, yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Uh, only thing been done, the hood been painted a little bit <coughs> on it, and but we buffed it out and you know, cleaned it up some. Nice. I like that plate. Yeah. 68 cat. Well, I got nice. that. Yeah. And I, this one joke. I, I I actually, when I put it on my trail, it was because of that, you know? Oh, nice. Yeah. And, uh, so I should have put it on that. Yeah. So, you know, 55 years old now. That's amazing, yeah, huh? You know? so, yeah. And that leopard print looks real nice, too, yeah, huh? Yeah. That looks really nice. Yeah. This this been in the trailer for, I say, at least 12 years. Really? We took years. it. We just took it out. Cleaned it all up, then I had a bunch of accessories, you know, like the yep. skis and this and that. So we just put a few things on it, you know, just dress it up a little bit. Yeah. Let's see, and then your name is Frank Edmondson from Gorham, New Hampshire. Yeah. 
cool deal. I want to come around this side and get it. Oh, and you've got the pizza cutter things pizza on there. Pizza cutters too. Yeah. Those are cool. And that, that's the original hat for the snowmobile too. Oh, under the, under the, the, uh, the hood thing there. there. Yeah. yeah. Back, back in 096. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, the Very pizza cool. cutters. That's a nice shape. You know, I don't know if you knew, before the runners come out, that's what they had Before the they pizza had carbides, yeah, to give them a bite in the corner. And I'm not 100% sure, but I was told many years ago, Snowjet is actually the one that comes out with the sliders. Really? How true that is, I don't know, but that's what I heard. Interesting. And, uh, but that, you know, like when the circle tracks, yeah. you know, it was all ice. So that's what they put the pizza cutters on. Give so them an edge in the yeah, corner. When, when you know, they got the groove and stuff going. Yeah. So yeah, that was, uh, that was the thing back in the day. That's a great idea. And as you can see, no shocks or nothing in it. You sure. Know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All rough riding. You yeah, know. just that leaf spring. Yeah. You know, a little single cylinder. Yeah. And it, 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 when, it's, when it starts up, it's pot, 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 pot. You know what I mean? It sounds pretty good. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, and I've got this for you for doing this with me. Any of you with this guy here? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to give you two. Too. One for you, one for him. Oh, well, thank you. Got a free DVD and an Anzo catalog. And yeah, if you can give him one. I will. Yeah. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Nice meeting you, man. Thanks for talking these up. Cool, and then we've got Ray Parento's Rups here. We're going to be talking these up in a little while. We're going to catch up with him and get him to talk these up. Now, I think I saw on Facebook that he got a new sled recently. Not new, but new to him. This might be it here, actually. 76 Mark. Snow Twister. I think he had a trail twister and he sold it. There we go. This is probably what, 73, 74 maybe? A 440 Harley? 73 Harley Davidson owned by Bob Chaplin. Cool deal. Got a little ski dude going by. <coughs> Keep going. And what is this? It looks like a snow jet hood, but I don't know. This is a 74 Yamaha owned by Neil Cedarbear. Cedarbear? Okay. I was thinking this tunnel looked kind of like a snow jet, but no. That's a Yamaha. Cool. Let's go down this aisle here. How's it going? How are you? Good. Enjoying these tropical breezes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. Crazy, huh? Do you have sleds here? Yeah, we, well, we rode in our new ones. <laughs> oh, nice. Sweet. <laughs> we got a bunch of old ones, but... Sweet. Yeah, we were going to bring one today and decided not to. Sure. Should have brought it, but we never. What would it? What would that have been? Uh, 88 Indy 650. Yeah, sweet Polaris. Yeah. So. Sweet. Yeah, you got the f what, first place at the Iron yeah. Poncho last year. Right? Oh, nice. Yeah. So he's gonna bring it. Sorry. He restored that yeah. year. That year class. Nice. It's in good shape. It's a, he wrote it. He wrote it when he was a kid. It was yeah. my wife's sled. Oh, nice. Yeah. Let's get some history to it. Family history. Yeah, we sold it, and I ended up getting it back from the person we sold it to because we knew the person. And yeah. Got it back. It doesn't run great, but it's a work in progress. Nice. I want to make sure you're both. You, you mind being on camera? Sure. Cool, yeah. And what were your names? I'm Justin. He's Bill. Cool. Father and son? Yep. yep. Nice. Yep. Cool. Yeah, we have a camp at Granby. We rode over on the two sleds. So. Nice. The sleds right the over there. Ones. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Luxurious model. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, compared to these. Yeah. Yeah, they've come a long way, haven't they? Yeah. No. Crazy. Oh, for sure. A lot of history. Yep. Well, I've got something for you for coming on camera. Sure. Get two of these here. Yeah, free DVD and an AMSO catalog. Oh, great. Cool. One for each of you there. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate you being on camera. Cool. Thanks for having us. Cool deal.
We'll catch up with you guys inside. Uh, <laughs> no, we just came for them. Yeah, we're going to rip inside. to now. Oh, cool. Back to the trails? Back to yeah, the trails. Sweet. The trails. Can't well, waste a day, though, you know? No, it's too nice. <laughs> Winter's too short. Yes. Maybe cool. Most of it all we can. Yeah. Well, nice meeting you guys. Nice, nice meeting you. Good riding. Thank you. <sighs> Very cool. I know the Sullys have some sleds here. I see Aaron over there. He was talking to someone earlier. Paul Sully, okay. And this is a 66 Model 100. And he's got some, looks like moose antlers in the uh, sleigh there. Aaron over here. How's it going, Aaron? Good. You keeping warm? Yeah. You mind being on camera? Cool. I appreciate it, man. Get through the winter, all right? Yeah. Good. It's nice to see you. You too. Yeah. See ya. You, uh, is this the first show you've been to this year? It is. I meant to go to Washington, but we had a family situation. I couldn't make it, sadly. But yeah, it was uh, just barely enough snow, but yeah. it was a good turnout for the conditions. Nice. Yeah. yeah, my brother lives nearby, and he went. And he took a little bit of video and some pictures, and it looked like a lot of fun. It looks like I missed a good show. It was a good show. Yeah, great show. Nice. Yeah, they really come a long way with that. They, they put on a great show. Yes, yeah, so that was. Uh, I think with the. A little bit better conditions it would have been probably a record-breaking show just to, going by the, the amount of people that were there for the, for the marginal conditions you know yeah but, yeah no that's a good one uh, this is always a good one for sure and, uh, yeah, there's, a, there's a few this year that are coming up pretty good ones yeah Rutland show and um, yeah a couple other ones in New Hampshire I think yeah Cool deal. Tis the season, so to say, so to speak, right? Yes, it is. It is that magical time of year for snowmobile shows and riding. And it only happens once a year, so. Yeah. Now you're not getting ready to tape my mouth shut now, are you? Got <laughs> <laughs> no, tape frozen. Oh no. <laughs> no, I'm gonna tape my paper on it. Sure, sure. But uh, do you have any sleds you feel like talking up or? Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, not, not a whole lot to say about this one. But. No. This is a 65 100D Arctic Cat. Aaron Silly. Warm it up in the jacket a little bit. Cool. Well, yeah, it's good to see you. Let me, let me give you this for being on camera with me. Get a free DVD and an Amsoil catalog. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Amsoil. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and you're using that to uh, offset the cost of doing the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, so make a few sales here and there, and that helps very much to offset the cost of doing the podcast. So, sure. yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little chilly out today, but... Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so far. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's definitely cold, but it's doable. I mean, I'm I'm out here and I'm I'm alive, so it's. Yep. And you are too, so it's doable. Well, it only happens once a year, so. Yeah. Yeah, and it's true. I was speaking to Paul on the phone yesterday. Paul Crane, the organizer of this, and he was saying, "Yeah, I'm having it no matter what." And yeah. He said the hardcore are gonna come, and. Yeah. So this is the hardcore. <laughs> Yeah, and it's true. These are the people you see in shows, no matter the condition. Yeah. 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 There's a few guys that travel pretty good distances, you know, that I don't see here. So. Yeah. They probably. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll have to hold off this year. Yeah, I can't say I blame them. That's a long way to travel. Yeah. Because if you have a breakdown on this weather, it's not good. Yeah. 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 Even a flat tire would be hell. That would be miserable. <laughs> yeah. It would. Well, cool. Well, yeah, well, I'm gonna walk around some more, but I'll probably catch up with you inside. Excellent. Cool. Good seeing you, Aaron. You too. Take care. You too. I don't know if my brother Thane's gonna make it or not. I didn't hear from him, so. Uh, oh yeah. Well, let me give you an extra because you got a couple, a few family members, right? Oh yeah. What, what, four, three, four here today. Let me give you some of these. How many do you need for them? Oh, I don't know. That's, Is that enough? Need a couple more? No, that's good. All right. Sweet.
I'll throw them on their machine and then there we go. Like, Where did this come from? Yeah. Benny's from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Alright man, we'll catch up with you. Yeah. Yeah, so we're here at the Crane Snowmobile Show, February 5th, 2023. It's probably 12 to 15 degrees below zero with a modest breeze. It's not as windy as yesterday, but it's definitely a breeze that when it comes up, it'll take your breath away. So I'm gonna catch up with Ray Parento. He owns these rups and the snow twister. He always does a good job of talking these up. And now I've been to his house and talked these up, so you've probably seen these on my podcasts, but uh, these are beautiful sleds. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm gonna uh, wind her down and go inside. Back in Midge's kitchen. How you doing, Mitch? Oh, good, good, Mike. Good. Yeah, uh, uh, Rod gave me a, a gift here that, that Mike brought uh, down to me, and uh, we're about to unveil it. I don't know what it is. And yeah, we were here so. just a few weeks ago doing some video, and we we did a video message to Rob. Um, I, I did. I, I'm an, an, an Amsoil, uh, I'm a believer in Amsoil, and... Uh, I've got some, uh, I, I run uh, the racing oil in my uh, Polaris vintage sled. Yes. So. And uh, Rob enjoyed Midge's message, Midge's video message, so he sent this to us as a gift. And we're going to open it up right now and this. see what he sent to us. Yeah. yeah. Will you do All the honors? All right, let's do the honors here. There you go, Mike. Cool. It's like Christmas all over again. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Man, look at this. Wow, oh, look at that. Wow, that. Look at this. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, there's two in there, that, one for each of us, and he said one's yeah, an XL cool. and one's a medium. Is All medium right. a good size for you? Yeah, my, I could probably take a small or a medium. Oh, good. And, That's uh, the medium right there, I think. And this is, uh, this is the medium. So you, you want to put a what? Uh, oh. XL. Okay. Yeah, you say we put them good. on and yeah, let's try it. show them the merchandise. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much to Rob. Yeah. Yeah, Rob, thank you very much. And there we are. Oh, yes, let's uh, yeah. we'll get a shot of us. Oh, hoodies. Yeah, it's a hoodie. Look at me, dear. All right. Nice. <laughs> okay. And we'll put them on. Yeah. Oh, nice and warm. Don't you wish you had that earlier? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it fits you good. Oh, yeah, it fits great. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So are now we're the Amsoil Twins. Right. Here yes, we are. Yes, you do. Yeah, thanks an awful lot. Yeah, this yeah. is amazing, Rob. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, got a hoodie. Yeah, we'll get the hoods yeah. going. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> and to anyone who's wondering what started all this, this is a, a video message that Midge did to Rob a little while back. I'm going to play that right now in editing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can see what started all this. And yeah. Uh, yeah, when we were uh, announcing uh, the 2023 inductees for the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame, I knew Rod was a Ron was a uh, uh, an Amsoil dealer, and uh, he always uh, advertised uh, the Amsoil products on on Mike's podcast every Thursday night, and uh, he's a mainstay of the of that event right now. And uh, he and Mike have collaborated on the uh, Amsoil products, so I thought I would uh, throw a pitch his way. And I brought up my little gallon jug of uh, of racing oil, Amsoil racing oil that I use in my Polaris sled. So yeah, yeah, and uh, and he and, and uh, he appreciated it. Yeah, I for guess sure. so. Yeah, and it's a very nice gift, and I appreciate that. For so. sure. Yeah, thank you so much, Rob. Thank you very much. Cool. Yeah. Stay tuned for what started this. We're going to run the video of the, the, what started this. Yeah, event. yeah, yeah. Great. All right. All right. This is for our uh, friend uh, Rob Hilditch. The Amsoil guy. Uh, see what I have here, Rob. And uh, I think you have a photo of my sled uh, last year at Pittsburgh. Mike, you can probably yes. pop that up. 
I, uh, I've got this uh, 1975 uh, Polaris clone PDC. It started out as a 77 TX 440 and I uh, had Mark Belanger do the job and Mike has got a photo of it I believe somewhere and you can pop it on and there's a photo of me sitting on that sled uh, getting ready to head out in the Pittsburgh ride up up north in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire this last March. It was 35, 40 degrees. We had eight inches of wet, heavy snow. It snowed all day. And I was trying to break in this new engine. It was probably the worst uh, conditions of trying to break in an engine is to take off on a 30 mile run uh, at 50, 60 miles an hour because that's the speed these guys were going up there. Uh, to, to break in this new engine, but it ran perfect all day long, and I and I believe a lot of it is probably due to this racing AMS oil that I use. It's uh, you only use like uh, I think I did a little more than 50 to one. It says 50 to one here, but I think I did more like 40 to one to break in the engine. And so anyway, just a shout out to Rob. That, uh, that I'm using it as well, and uh, there you have it, and uh, <laughs> happy trails when we get snow. Yes, and if you're curious about buying some Amazon, I'll just click the link in the description, and uh, in doing so with, with my dealer number, you're helping to support the podcast, and I thank you so much in advance for doing that, and thank all of the people who have been doing that, that helps to support the podcast. Yeah. And thank you. That yeah. helps to support right, the podcast. Well, You're doing this. Yeah. Well, I thought this would make Rob smile. Oh, for sure. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to the podcast. I'm really glad you're here. We're going to do something a little different tonight. We're going to have an Amsoil Oilathon. Now, what is an Oilathon, you might ask? <laughs> well, it's an opportunity for us to do some Q&A and uh, to learn about Amsoil products, especially as they pertain uh, to snowmobiles, modern and vintage. We're also going to talk a little bit about applications for cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, things like that. But it's mostly going to be about snowmobiles. Now, before we get into all of that, I want to make sure that everything is working properly. So if you can see my face and hear my voice, I'm going to ask you to leave a comment. Uh, let me know where you're viewing this from and whether you are a first-time viewer of the podcast or a regular viewer of the podcast. To our first-time viewers, we thank you so much for checking us out. Hope you have a good time with us tonight and hope you decide to circle back here in one week's time on either Sunday night or Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time uh, for our podcast. We have something in this slot at 8 p.m. every Sunday night, and we also do a, a regular podcast every Thursday night. Hope you will join us for all of these things. To our regular viewers who are here week after week and season after season, thank you so very much. You, you guys are the ones who make this possible, and we really, really appreciate that. Now, let's not uh, waste any more time here. Let's bring Rob on. Rob, how are you doing tonight? I think winter finally showed up. Finally. <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, to it's our viewers, I let it. I've seen green grass on my front lawn. Unreal, huh? It, it's been a crazy winter. Yeah, I'm glad you finally have some rideable snow over there. And to our viewers, too, if you finally have some rideable snow, please leave us a comment and let me know uh, where you are and how much snow you got. Um, see, we've got a comment coming in. Oh, good. Our good friends, Stacy and Art Fosler from Platkill, New York, regular viewers. They've been watching from the very beginning, and they said everything looks and sounds good. And Stacy and Art, did you get any snow there in Platkill, New York? Enough to do some riding on. Uh, love to hear from you. But... Um, yeah, well, we're waiting for some more comments. Um, uh, Rob here is a regular on the podcast. He's If you're a, re a regular viewer of these podcasts, Rob is no stranger to you. Uh, and also, it's also no secret, as you can tell by his shirt and his hat and the banner behind him, he is the Amazoil guy. Uh, and he's going to be uh, answering questions for us and explaining in great detail all of the different products that are available to us as snowmobilers, both vintage riders, modern uh, riders, and everything in between. Um, and before we get into that, we've got a couple of quick questions. Stacy and Art say no snow yet. Uh, George Jackson says been riding in Wisconsin for about a month. Wonderful. Well, I'm glad someone somewhere is getting some snow. Well, cool. So, Rob, if you're ready, I'm going to put you full screen. If you can uh, just kind of take us down the path and tell us about Amsoil. Okay. I've been involved with Amsoil for oh, 40 years. Back in 1979, I was racing a 79 SRX Yamaha. 
And a guy from New York State, Tim Bender, came up and said, you're having a lot of problems following plugs. I said, yeah, had a 15 to 1 oil mixture before I get out the starting line, I'm following a plug. He said, try AMS oil. He said, try it at 100 to 1. He said, 100 to 1, I'll blow my motor up. He says, no, I'm running my race machine at 300 to 1. You try it at 100 to 1, that's what it's warranty at, and you'll have more performance, more horsepower, and a longer engine life. So later that day, he gave me a tank of his fuel. I put it in the machine. First time I ever made it to the finals. It did make a difference in the performance, how much better the machine run, and the more horsepower I had. And at 100 to 1, I didn't foul any plugs. Now, this was a product right here that we were using at the time, Amsoil Sabre Oil. One of these bottles, 8 ounces to 5 gallons of gas. It's perfect for me at the cottage. It doesn't matter if it's a chainsaw, weed eater, my 200 Black Max, a 50 Merc on the back of the pontoon boat, or the 99. Everything runs the same oil mixture with Amsoil, 101. They came out with this product in 1972, and all the oil manufacturers says, you're going to get sued, you're going to get sued. It's the same product we have in the market now. Outperforms everything else out there in the market. Burns cleaner, gives you more horsepower and more performance. Then after that, Snowbill started becoming popular. Amzo came out first with our injector oil. Yes, and it can be used for snowmobile, boats, anything that's injector. You can also run at a pre-mix. And this is what we had for a number of years until Bombardier came out with uh, Exhaustus, Rave Engine. And with the Rave Engine, we needed an oil that was a 92% no ash. Otherwise, the ash in the oil, ash was also a lubricant, the ash in the oil would plug up the exhaust valves, they would stop working, and you had less power out of the machine. The Rave Engine with the exhaust valves performed more, more performance out of it if you kept them clean. So Amzo came out with the Interceptor. It is 98% no ash. So it's perfect for all the new machines out there now. You put it in the machine, you notice an increase in horsepower, more performance, because of less friction, less drag. Amsoil is a slipperier type oil than the petroleum oils on the market. By cutting down friction and drag, you get more horsepower, more performance, and longer engine life. And that's the main thing you want out of your equipment. Longer engine life, more performance, and everybody likes more performance when out there in the machine. If Absolutely. You have two or three buddies all got the same machines, if all three of them have an 800 and the one guy's running Amsoil, you'll notice the one with the Amsoil, no smoke coming out of it, more performance, more horsepower, and a little faster going down the lake than the other guys. Yeah. And the machines aren't cheap now. You can't no. buy a snowmobile for $10,000. Some yeah. of my friends are paying over $30,000 for a snowmobile now. And you don't want to put a cheap quality oil in that high performance engine because it needs extra protection. So that's another one of our products to have. And the other snowmobile oil that we like mainly for racing application, I'll try this way, Dominator. Dominator is not a 92% no ash oil. It will foul the valves. Um, I personally run it in my own machine because the interceptor will give you a 5 to 6% increase in horsepower. This gives you almost 7. So it does give you a little bit more horsepower. But I've been stuck on a trail where it was washboard for six, seven miles where the groomer hadn't gone down yet. And before I got down that seven miles, I just stopped and changed one of the valves, one of the spark plugs, because it did foul up. Um, but it does give me more horsepower, more performance, and that's why I run it. Yeah. But I should have been running the Interceptor, and that's what all my friends run in theirs. Yeah, so Amsoil has a complete line of products for all the applications for snowmobiles. Yes, the four strokes, we have the four strokes also. Zero W40. If you're out and it's 50 below zero, this pours at 58 below zero. It'll make it run cooler, more performance, more horsepower, just like all the other products. Yeah, so we have them all covered. Yeah. Um, my, last week we were talking about one of our other products is chain case. A lot of the snowmobiles, people lift up the back end of the machine, they rev it up first thing in the morning because they think their rubber track is frozen in the snow. No, you're running a 75W90 gear lube in your chain case. And if it's 20 below, what do you think that gear oil is like? It's just like honey. That's what's making your belt burn first thing in the morning. If you put the Amsoil chain case in it, it'll pour at 58 below zero. So the chain case won't be, the oil will not be in there thick. 
Have you ever seen somebody tear their chain keys apart in the wintertime and they got to change the oil? At the races, I see it all the time. People's got to change the gears for the size of oval track they're going to be racing on. They have a spoon in there. They're scraping the oil out like it's honey. Mm -hmm. The Amsoil, they pour it out, it runs all over the place on them. It makes a big difference by having a lubricant that still flows in cold weather for protection. And in the wintertime, the only way that chain case oil will thin out and perform the way it's supposed to be is by the chain building up friction, heat, drag, which is wear and tear. You don't want that. You want a lubricant that will pour in the cold weather, give you more performance, more horsepower, just like all our other products do. And you change it once a year. Now, like, Amsoil has a lot of products for a lot of applications. And a lot of them we, we don't talk about because this is mainly a snowmobile show, but we have a complete line of antifreezes. Do you have a picture of the antifreeze there? You can pop I up. do. Let me pop that on the screen. There we yes. go. Yes. 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 We use a different kind of antifreeze than the other companies do. And the reason I really like it because it's pet friendly. A lot of antifreeze, when it drips out, if an animal licks it, it's very toxic. Amsoil's not. A lot of antifreeze is only good for two years. I think Amsoil's eight. I have to double check on the stats, but I think it's seven or eight years it's good for. And the best thing I like about our antifreeze is it'll make it run cooler because it disperses the heat better. But then Amsoil came up with another product we can add to our antifreeze. Now it's a cooler boost, the one on the far right. It was designed for stock cars. The problem is with stock cars, they don't want antifreeze on the track. It's too hard to clean up, so they got to run straight water. Straight water will boil faster than antifreeze will. So people like to put a coolant boost in their water to make the stock car run cooler. Well, we found out in the wintertime, by putting that same cooler boost in our car, it cuts down on the time it takes for the car to warm up. And in our snowmobiles, when you're out there 40 below and you got to get over the car, you got to get the snowmobile warmed up. Some people like to jump back in their car to stay warm when the snowmobile's warming up. And will eliminate that problem because the cooler boost will make the snowmobile warm up faster. But when, once it does get up to heat, the coolant boost disperses heat faster than antifreeze does, so it will run cooler. And a lot of people say a snowball never overheat. I've got, I had to go down a lake seven miles where there's no snow on the middle of the lake, and people were overheating them when it was 20 below on the bare ice because we didn't have kickers, and the snow wasn't being kicked up in the heat exchange, and the machines were overheating, except for mine with the coolant boost. It made that yeah. much difference in the machine run cooler. One of the machines with us, a Yamaha, we had to stop and kick the track because the sliders heated up so much, the track wouldn't turn anymore. So this guy went and looked for open water to keep hitting to cool the engine down. Wow. <laughs> Things people will do to keep their motors running. Yeah, by, for sure. By adding something like a coolant boost, this will help make the engine run cooler, and it also makes the engine heat up faster. Yeah, it's a great additive. I use it in my pickup trucks, my little car, and my snowmobiles. Nice. Anything liquid cooled, that's it's a nice additive. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Sure. And when you're out snowmobiling, you're not out snowmobiling when it's ten above. You're out there when it's twenty below or ten below. And it does get cold. And by having a product that will warm up faster, especially a lot of times you stop and you go into a restaurant and you come back out. It doesn't take long for that snowmobile to cool back down, and you got to sit there and let it warm up. And a lot of them have a rad and a heat exchanger on it. So once the thermostat opens up once, we got some people that still smoke cigarettes, and the rule is it's a two cigarette before he can take off on a snowmobile. It takes that long to warm it up. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, you can cold season when sure. it's really cold out. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now we. Um... Before we shift gears, uh, I want to back up a little bit to the Dominator product. A mutual friend of ours a little while back uh, did a testimonial for us. Um, and I know we've already seen it, but it's just a couple of minutes. I'd like to play it again. Uh, this is our mutual friend, Midge Rosebrook. He's the founder of the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. And he made this video. It's a quick video. Let's take a look. This is for our uh, friend, uh, Rob Hilditch, the Amsoil guy. Uh, see what I have here, Rob. And uh, I think you have a photo of my sled uh, last year at Pittsburgh. Mike, you can probably yes. pop that up. I, uh, I've got this uh, 1975 uh, Polaris clone 
PDC. It started out as a 77 DX 440 and I uh, had Mark Belanger do the job and Mike has got a photo of it I believe somewhere and you can pop it on and there's a photo of me sitting on that sled uh, getting ready to head out in the Pittsburgh ride up, up north in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire this last March. It was 35, 40 degrees. We had eight inches of wet, heavy snow. It snowed all day. And I was trying to break in this new engine. It was probably the worst uh, conditions of trying to break in an engine is to take off on a 30 mile run uh, at 50, 60 miles an hour because that's the speed these guys were going up there uh, to, to break in this new engine. But it ran perfect all day long and I and I believe a lot of it is probably due to this racing AMS oil that I use. It's uh, the only use like uh, I think I did a little more than 50 to 1. It says 50 to 1 here but I think I did more like 40 to 1 to break in the engine and so anyway just a shout out to Rob that, uh, that I'm using it as well and uh, there you have it and uh, <laughs> happy trails when we get snow yes and if you're curious about buying some Amazon I'll just click the link in the description and uh, in doing so with with my dealer number you're helping to support the podcast and I thank you so much in advance for doing that and thank all of the people who have been doing that that helps to support the podcast yeah and thank you that yeah. helps to support right, the Mike. podcast you're doing this yeah well, I thought this would make Rob smile oh for sure <laughs> thank you yeah so what do you think? Did that make Rob smile? I like seeing good testimonies like that. Good. Good deal. So what are your thoughts on that where someone's, you know, done a restoration or something and they're they're breaking in a new engine? Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that as far as do's and don'ts and, and things like that? Best thing to do is use the best oil you can get your hands on for those applications. Yeah. He, I bet he doesn't have a $1,000 motor in that thing. He's probably got, <laughs> he's probably nickel plated cylinders in that. Yes. It's probably a replica of the actual race engine. So yeah. it's it's not a cheap motor. So the, the best thing to do is use the best oil you can. Yeah. And you know what? All the big racetracks, if you go on the Eagle River racetrack site, you can look up the rules and regulations, and they tell you you can only use three different kinds of fuel, and there's only two different kinds of oil you can use, Bombardier and Amsoil. So really? Everybody at that track either is running Bombardier or Amsoil. It's the only two that, that that's approved for the track. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. That says something. That's an endorsement in itself, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sure. And it's right on their website. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I did snowcross for 14 years. And when I first year I went to snowcross, people brought five or six snowmobiles with them because they blew the motors up. Second year after me at being at snowcross, people would go a whole season on the same motor. They wouldn't blow engines up anymore. It made that much of a difference, AMS on the engines. That's amazing. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Now, the nice thing, too, is not only are there the, the motor oils that we've talked about for either injections or premix or anything like that. Um, we're going to pop a, a graphic on the screen. We also have some other items at Amsoil uh, that are useful to snowmobile owners. Uh, yeah. Want to talk yeah some of these it's up? got a lot of different spray cans, fogging oil. A lot of people like to fog their engines before they put them away at the end, end of the year. The mud slinger. Um, a lot of it for the dirt bike people. Um, when they're racing dirt bikes, if they don't have the mud slinger on and it's a muddy track, that dirt bike can come in weighing 50 pounds heavier after 20 laps than what it was before. And the chain lube for the chains for the dirt bikes. Silicone spray. Uh, we had a problem two weeks ago with the wife's car. Uh, uh, couldn't get the passenger door open because the rubbers were froze. You wouldn't think a rubber would freeze on a car, but we end up getting the silicone spray out, spraying it, and haven't had a problem since. A metal protector, it's a big seller for me for opening new accounts. If I go to a trucking company or something like that, they have their favorite oil. Or the best thing I like to do is when I, when I go to a farm tractor, a John Deere guy. John Deere guy will not buy anything else except for John Deere. But if I go approach them with a product like our MP and say, do you ever have a bolt seed you can't get out or something like that or something squeaking? Or uh, 
a shaft on your hydraulic that's got rust marks on it and it's wearing the seals out. I said, here, try our metal detector. And by getting them to try that, the farmer will phone me up and said, well, I've never seen a metal detector work as good as that. If it works that good, how good your oil? But if I were to approach the John Deere guy about using the AMSO to start with, he won't use any except for John Deere oil. So it's a good introduction product. Now the heavy duty MP, I happen to have a can right here. Oh, good, yeah. It's a 15 ounce can. It's a good size can. And I'm doing a test this week on my car. I got really aggressive snow tires on my car. On one side of the car, I'm spreading the wheel wells with this. The other side, I'm not. Because last week, when we got really cold, there was so much ice and snow under there, the wheel wouldn't turn. I had to go up with a hammer and break that frozen snow off. So I'm going to spray under there with this here. Because I also use them on the snow shovels. Today, we had a really wet snow. So after spraying the shovel with this, lift the shovel up and the snow just falls off. It didn't stick. So I'm, a lot of my customers use it in their snow blowers because uh, with the wet snow, they got to get a stick out and stick down the auger to get it cleaned out. By having a spray in there, that wet snow won't stick. It vents, vents that problem from happening. Um, two of my snow plow companies use it on the front of the plows. I didn't think snow would stick on a plow. But when it's wet, packy snow, it sticks. Sometimes a front end loader, they go to dump it and it still has a half a load sitting there until they hit it two or three times. By putting the MP in it, they lift it up and it falls right out. So, it's, and I got one guy, he wants it. He's going to just try to use it for an undercoater. He's going to spray his hole underneath his vehicle. He's used it for a number of years and he's tired of some of these products people are using right now for undercoating and he wants to try the Amsoil MP. So it'll be interesting how he finds how well it works by the end of the year. But it's a multi-purpose product. Yeah. One uses you can use it for. That's amazing. That's amazing. Now we have some comments coming in. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this goes back to when we were talking about the price of uh, snowmobiles. It's hard to find something under ten thousand dollars. So John Lass is confirming that, saying you can't buy a cheap old machine anymore. That's certainly true. No. And Everybody then, thinks uh, their old machines are worth big bucks. <laughs> yeah. 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 I got a couple old Jags if somebody wants them. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Ann Packer says this week we're going to get some snow. So good. Maybe they can finally get some riding in. Yeah. Now, one of the things we haven't talked about yet is, is the pricing. And um, one of the things I always say is, you know, the best is never cheap. Um, but uh, also when you compare other factors, Emsoil can in many cases be the, the economical choice, not only the best quality choice, but the most economical choice, and, I'll, and I'll, that leads me to a comment that, we, that just came in, and I'll let you speak to all of this. But Mike Skidmore is saying he just paid thirty-one dollars per gallon for Lucas Snowmobile oil, and that's what he paid for paid for Clots uh, oil in two thousand fourteen. Um, do you want to speak to that, or just the the economics or the the value angle of, of uh, Amsoil? We we have some companies up here selling injector oil for twenty-one bucks a gallon. It's a recycle company we have up here. If you have a new machine, you definitely don't want to put that quality oil in your vehicle. But Amsoil is cheaper than the manufacturers. If you went to a Bombardier shop and asked them how much their gallon of oil is, um, Bombardier sells theirs for about $69 a gallon. Amsoil, we sell ours for, let's see, the Interceptor, $57 a gallon, one at a time. If you buy a case of it, $227. Now, later on, Mike and I will talk about the preferred account. Preferred, you buy directly from Amzo. Instead of paying $227, you pay $166. That brings it down to like $44 a jug. Yeah. So that's only $10 more than when he paid for that Lucas. But look at the quality difference you're getting in the product. More performance, more horsepower, longer engine life. Yeah, you're getting the best available oil at a very reasonable price. Yeah, yeah. And if you have the older type machine where you don't need the interceptor and you don't have a race engine in it, so you don't need the dominator, you just need the injector oil. Our injector oil is $188 for a case, and your preferred price is $130.39. That brings it down to less than $34 a bottle. Yeah, that's. So you're that's still nice. getting a good quality product, but. Yeah, we, we're comparable to the other products out there that are performance product. Yeah. But we're cheaper than what the manufacturers are. Nice. So it's a very strong value proposal there. Yep. 
Yeah. So I guess that's a good segue now into the preferred customer program. I'm going to pop a graphic on the screen. And I think in the past you've told me that uh, it's very similar to a Costco membership where it's a one-time $10 fee, but that fee gives you instant access to the deepest possible discounts that Amazon has to offer, as well as some other things. In fact, I'm going to pop that on the screen. Yeah, why buy directly from a retailer that's carrying the product? You can buy directly from Amsoil. You can get a preferred account. They have an introduction fee for $10. You get a six-month membership to see if it's cost-efficient for you. And most people find it really is cost-efficient because you can save almost $50 on a case of gallons. And most people, no one snows about snowmobiles by themselves, so they usually tell their buddies, hey, I'm going to order a case. You want one too? So they save $100 on two cases. But by being a preferred customer, you save almost 25% on all the products you order. You don't have to order a full case. You can mix and match. And if you order $100 worth, you get free shipping. So say you wanted a, case, a couple of bottles of Dominator oil and some interceptor. You can mix and match the case. You get a total of $100. They ship it to you free. On your birthday, they send you a $5. You get a $5 coupon. Every time you order $100 worth, you get a $5 coupon. So if you ordered um, $600 worth during the year, that would pay for your $30 membership the following year. So your membership would be free for you by ordering that much product. Yeah, that's an amazing It doesn't value. take all that long to order that much product. No. So what was it? Uh, the, the, the Interceptor, uh, $166 for a case. Sure, sure. And and if at this point you're thinking about taking advantage of that, the way the best way to do it is look in the description for a link uh, to the preferred customer program. Click on that link, and it's just a few clicks to get yourself set up on that preferred customer program. And then you can go shop on the website. And since you've clicked the boxes for the preferred customer program, anything you order now is going to give you uh, that deepest level of discount that's available to you now as a preferred customer. So now you, you select your items and you make your order and you're probably going to save more than your $10 investment right on that first order. Yes. So you get your savings right away. It's an incredible value. Yeah. Um, so and, and, and also the other thing, too, is in clicking that link, you're signing up under Rob and I. And in the interest of full disclosure, I'm signed up as an Amsoil dealer under Rob. So when you order through me using that link in the description and using my dealer number there, uh, Rob and I both benefit. And if you enjoy these podcasts that you see us on every week, it's a wonderful way to support that because Rob and I both make a commission uh, whenever you order. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just a commission we, we get as being set up as dealers. And the commissions that I make go directly toward offsetting the cost of doing these podcasts. So it's a wonderful way to support the podcast. And, you know, it's a way I'd like to thank people for doing that uh, because it does. It's not cheap to do these podcasts. I'm happy to do them, but it costs money and the, off the MZOIL commissions help to offset that. And uh, one other thing, we've got a promotion that's on currently. I'll pop the graphic on the screen if you want to talk this up, Rob. If anybody's ordering other products, like say you got a diesel truck or a car or something, and you order some other products, and you add two bottles of Amsoil 2 Cycle to that oil order, they're going to throw in a free hat for you. Nice. And you just got to use the promotion code CCO123ATS. And it's good till January 31st. Yeah, so there's a couple more days to act on that. Yeah. And there's a certain part of the order, the order process, where it will ask you for the the dealer number of the person who you refer, who has referred you. And you'll see my number there on the screen, 304-55594. I'll ask you to please enter that number. That way Rob and I will both get credit for it. And, and we do thank you so much in advance for doing that. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of people send me an email and say, well, what is the price of something? If you click on the, the bottom of Mike's thing, there's a thing on there where you can click and you can get a free catalog from Amazon. Yes. And inside the catalog where you open it up is the two cycle oils. And it tells you what the retail price is and what the preferred price is. And it tells you one bottle or one case. So you know ahead of time exactly what you're paying for all the Amazon products. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of Amsoil products, look at this wide range of products that Amsoil has to offer. Um, all of these products are in that catalog, and it gives you a chance to sit there at your leisure and flip through the catalog and see what, if anything, in there is right for you. Yes, yes. Amsoil has a complete line of products for everything, right from gas engines, 
to um, diesel engines, uh, forklifts, compressor oils, automatic transmission fluid. One product that's not on that picture, Mike, one of my favorites, is the Amsel 75W90 gear loop. There we go. Have you ever tried to change the oil in the rear end of the car at home? I know the shops all have pumps and all that, but if you're doing this at home and you have a regular ball like this and you're trying to fill up a rear end, you don't have any room to tilt that any higher than that. This bottle, you put it up, you squeeze it, and 100% of the fluid comes out of this bottle. What nice. a neat idea for filling rear ends, transfer cases, automatic transmissions, stuff like that. And all our, really our products like that come in that. I wish our two cycle would come in it too, but it's got it's more money for that style bottle than it is for the regular. Sure, that's a really innovative approach to that for those awkward yes. angles like that. Yes, yes. At the next car show, we got we got a rear end sitting there. We got ten of those bottles with water in it, and people are going to try and realize how easy it is to fill something like that instead of using the old fashioned bottle trying to tip it and fill it in. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine there's a whole lot of profanity involved trying to do that. Oh, you waste so <laughs> You're making much. a mess. And, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And for some, sure. Of, some, of the, some of the big four-wheel drives, the 3500s, they, they will take four bottles of that stuff. So you have to buy five to get four in because you wasted so much. With the Amso, 100% of the stuff out of the bottle goes in. Goes, It all goes in, yeah. You yeah. get the right angle, you stuff, stuff that little nozzle right in there and just squeeze the bag until it's empty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if if you spill anything, it's one or two drops. Yeah, as opposed to ounces of it. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. That 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 creates an extra value as well. Yeah, yeah. And since yeah. we're talking about the automotive product, Amsel's five W thirty twenty W thirty, all the engine oils that Amsel has is warranted for twenty five thousand miles or one year. Most people change their oil at three or five thousand miles. And the reason they do that is because the petroleum oils, they oxidize. They form carbons, gums, sludges, varnish. They don't wear out. They get contaminated. That's why you got to change the oil at regular intervals. Synthetic oil, it was designed by a guy that was a jet aircraft pilot. And one day when he went to work, he asked his boss at work, why does my jet start when it's 40 below zero and my car won't? He says it's the synthetic oil. So once he found that out, he started investigating and designing the oil for the automobile industry. And when he first got, he was, we were the first oil to be AI approved back in 1972. Mobile One, them couldn't pass the test. None of the other products could pass the test. And all the other oil companies still were changing oils at 3,000 miles. And Amsoil, when they first came out in the market, they said 25,000 miles in one year. Castro and everybody else phoned our president up and said, you guys are going to be sued. Why are you doing that? And he said, well, we've tested our oil and we can go further than that. Well, wow. so Amsoil's since 1972 has been promoting 25,000 miles or one year oil changes. And people are amazed when they pull my stick out of my truck and the oil is so clean inside because it doesn't form any carbons, gums or sludges. And by putting a synthetic oil in the car, it's the same benefit as the snowball oil. Cuts down friction and drag. Less friction, less drag, the oil runs cooler. For every 10 degrees you drop, your oil temperature doubles the life. Wow. And for every friction and drag you cut down in the engine, gives you better gas mileage. So you're going to get longer oil changes, better gas mileage, less friction, less drag, engines that last longer, and you're going to get more performance out of the car. And the average truck, you don't buy a new truck now for under $70,000. Yeah, big so money. A lot of people at 100000 200000 are looking and trading their trucks. Mine's in kilometers. So mine's a hundred and a million and 300,000 kilometers. 800,000 miles, I think that is. And it still runs like a charm. Now wow. The carpet's wore out. The seat's got a spring sticking out of it. But the more, it's a six liter. And they're wow. not popular for lasting very long. And it still runs like a charm. That's amazing. And that's from running Amsoil all these years. Yes. Yes. I bought the truck on a Wednesday. I had to run to Montreal back. The next morning, I went in the dealership and said, dump the oil. I said, you just got a truck yesterday. I said, yeah, I got 1,000 miles on it. So we took an oil sample. And when the oil sample came back, the oil was contaminated with silicone, they say. And silicone is sand. Well, the engines are sandblasted. That's why I tell everybody with a new vehicle, change your first oil change soon. 
because there's a lot of contaminated, a lot of big metal particles in your first break-in of the oil. Yeah. So I recommend that people change your oil early on your first oil change. Flush that out. Go quick. twice as long, and then third, when you put the Amsel in, don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, cool. So we're unless you had any more on that, and if you do, by all means, keep going. But unless you had any more on that, I was going to switch gears. Did, did you have any more before we change gears? Or? While we're talking about the engine oils and the new gear loop bottle we just showed you, I do a lot with highway trucks. Um, some of these trucks take 48 quarts of oil. And when you're trying to t sell them a $15 quart of oil, you got to prove to them they're going to save money. Now, a lot of these guys are going 10,000 kilometers right now between oil changes. And with the Amzo, we do an oil analysis for them. And when the oil analysis comes back, it says, continue, don't change the oil yet. And some of them are going five times longer between oil changes. Some of these guys are changing oil once a month. By switching over the Amzo, they're doing it every half year. And I have a lot of customers that do steady runs. They're doing the same kind of run. And they know exactly how much gas. They're burning $1,000 worth of gas, diesel fuel a week. If they got a 10% increase in fuel economy, that's 100 bucks a week they're saving in their pocket by switching. Yeah, over. that's significant savings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One of my customers was delivering home fuel. Now, they got their oils free for their truck. And they came and bought Amsoil off me because one, one Christmas day at 10 below, their trucks wouldn't start and somebody needed home fuel. He says, yeah. by having the AMSO in it, it starts right up. And they got an average. They're the ones that get the average of 10% increase in fuel economy. So it was cheaper for them to run AMSO and buy it off me than to put their their comp brand of company oil in. Plus, they were spending every one Saturday a month changing the four trucks. Once they switched over the AMSO, they didn't have to do that. Yeah. So it saved them money, and they made more money by running the AMSO. It was cheaper for them. Sure. Now, would you say it's it's a good idea to do periodic uh, oil analysis of, on your vehicles just to kind of see what's going on with your engine? What 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 will that tell you if, if you're doing that, and and how useful is that as far as far as selecting oils or deciding when to change your oil or? One or of my other thoughts are a customer that was running from Canada down to Mexico, get parts, bring back and forth, and they switched over to Amsoil at fifty thousand miles on their highway truck. Now at 70,000, they did an oil sample and it said oil sample is a little more resample at 90. So they resampled at 90 and they told them to take their engine in and get their can replaced. So this guy took his truck into the dealership, it was still under warranty, said, I want the can replaced. Oil now says it's starting to wear out and it's low number such and such. So I phoned the oil company and I said, how do you know it's low such and such? He said, we know what model engine is. We've had that engine happen about 200 times already. So we know exactly what it is and why it's causing the problem. Eh? And the dealership says, no, nah, we checked it. Nothing wrong with it. The guy says, well, I'm a paying customer. I'll pay the $600 to have the cam changed. They took the cam out and the exact lobe that the oil analyst said was where it was where it. Now, if that would have <laughs> broke on him in Mexico, instead of being 600, it would have been $6,000 to get the truck repaired. Yeah. He says most of the time he tows the trucks back home to get them fixed because it's so expensive down there to fix them. But yeah. by doing no analysis, that prevented uh, a problem from happening. Yeah. So it's a wonderful preventative measure to, to do regular oil analysis. Especially if you got a vehicle's it... taking 48 quarts of oil instead of dumping it. And to prove no. to a customer that the AMSO will last longer, that's what we do with some of the vehicles. Yeah. yeah. But the average person with the car, they don't find it's necessary to do. Sure. You know, most people can pull the dipstick out, put wipe the dipstick with a Kleenex, look up at the sun, and if there's metal particles in there, it, you'll see, you see the, the flicker off the metal. You don't see any of that with Amsoil. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And if the person knows anything about oil, they know when they were changing their other oil how black and thick it was. Mm. And uh, I took my car in the truck one time. The guy says, why are you change the oil? It's brand new. I said, no, I have uh, 30,000 miles on that oil. Wow. That's why I'm changing it. Wow. Says, oh no way! It doesn't have that much miles on it. Yeah, that's impressive. I have all my friends come. Can I get your used oil? My car uses oil. Can I have your used oil? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the gift that keeps on giving, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And when we're talking about the gear lube, how the gear lube, uh, um, most people don't realize the ADW ninety how thick it would get. Mm -hmm. 
And I get a lot of highway trucks to get a better fuel economy by changing the gear lube. Amsoil's gear lube has a 500,000 mile extended warranty on the oil. Most, most highway trucks are changing every 50,000 miles. Hmm. Amsoil's 500,000 miles with their gear lube. That's amazing. Yeah, so it's a big savings for a highway truck. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Over time, that you really save a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's impressive. Well, cool. So in a moment, we're going to talk about the business opportunity at Amsoil, but I'm going to transition into that with, with a quick announcement. Um, and that is this. A little while back, I got this award from Amsoil. I'm going to try to get it. Where I, here we go. Now, this is a bronze cup for sales achievement. Um, and it's nice that they recognize me for that and everything. I really appreciate that. But the real thanks goes to the viewers who have been purchasing Amsoil using my dealer number. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, as I've said before, when you purchase Amsoil using my dealer number, it helps to offset the cost of doing these podcasts. And Rob and I are doing Amsoil together. I'm signed up under Rob. So when you order through me, Rob and I both benefit. If you enjoy seeing our smiling faces every week uh, and, and feel that, that that's something that's enjoyable to you and you want to help support that, buying Amsoil with us is a wonderful way to do that. And there are links uh, to do that in the description uh, to, to get started with the Amazon Preferred Customer Program, also to order a free catalog. Um, those are great ways to get started. Um, and did you have anything more, Rob, before we transition into Amsoil as a business opportunity? I forgot to mention one thing about the two-cycle oil, mm -hmm. the interceptor. I don't know if you can see the sign behind me, but I'm going to grab it. You see that in the screen, Mike? Yes. Okay, it's called Runnin' Freedom. Amsoil came out with this program to recognize a manufacturer can't tell you, Bombardier can't sell you, tell you, you got to run Bombardier oil, you don't have a warranty. If they do that, they have to give you oil free. It's a modest act down in the States, it's called or something. So Amsoil came out with this plan to let people know that a manufacturer can't say you got to run the oil. So Amsoil, if you buy a brand new snowmobile, they'll give you a one-year warranty. If you buy a brand new snowmobile and you put Amsoil in the machine and you fill out this card, you can get a two-year warranty from Amsoil. So if anything happens to your snowmobile the second year, Amsoil is going to cover it because they believe their oil is so much better than all the other ones on the market. And that's a great marketing plan for us. Yeah, the other sure. manufacturers aren't happy with it. They're trying to say, you can't warranty our machines. Well, we know our oil is better than your oil you're selling. And we're going to prove it to you by, and they, even if the person's machine's one year old and they start switching AMSO, we'll still give them one more year warranty. That's amazing. Yep. That's, that's what they call putting your money where your mouth is. The yes. proof in the pudding, so to speak. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. So yeah, unless there's anything else, did you want to, uh, shall we transition to the business opportunity or? Okay. Okay. Let's transfer over. Sure. So, yeah, as, as we're saying, you know, I'm signed up under Rob as a dealer. Uh, and if you sign up under me, Rob and I are both available to you for coaching and support. Um, and we, each of us brings a significant amount to the table of value to you as someone signing up for Amsoil. And I'll give you an example. Rob's been doing Amsoil for over 40 years. He knows all of the products in ins and outs. He knows all of the different uh, business models that you can do with Amsoil. And the one thing that he's especially strong at is selling Amsoil at events. Uh, you think of car shows, cruise nights, uh, snowmobile shows, boat shows, any sort of event or race or something. Rob is really good at selling Amsoil at those events. Um, and so Rob, is if you're curious about that, if you enjoy going to those types of events and races and things and thinking about uh, trying to monetize that selling Amsoil, Rob is the guy to coach you with that. And when you signed up under me, you get Rob and I. What I bring to the table is I do a lot with social media. And uh, I can help coach you on how to generate Amsoil leads on social media. I also have places that you can post to right now. Uh, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel, creating your own pages, social media pages and things. I'm not saying it's a bad idea to do that. It's a very good idea to do that. But I've got places you can start posting right away. And if you let's say you create a new page, it's a way it's a place to promote that page. And I've got a lot of little details, ins and outs on how to get on the right side of the, the Facebook algorithm. Uh, if you're thinking about doing a YouTube channel or a podcast, I can help you with that because I've been doing this. Um, a lot of things Rob and I both bring to the table that is uniquely available to you 
uh, that it's not available from other Amsoil dealers. And it's not to knock other Amsoil dealers, but Rob and I bring something very unique to the table if you're thinking about joining Amsoil as a dealer. Um, anything to add to that, Rob? I have dealers from California, Florida, BC, all over that I help. So with email, it's really easy to help dealers. We're available 24 hours a day. Yeah, you don't have to live right in my own town for me to help you. Yeah, it's true. With, with a phone and email and so forth, it's very easy to be in contact and give coaching and support. And yeah. And in a moment, I'm going to show a clip of Rob at a, at a, at a vintage snowmobile event. Or I don't know if it's modern or vintage, but a snowmobile event. And you'll see the setup he's got. It's a very impressive setup. Um, now, the nice thing is this is what's possible, but you don't have to start at that level. You can start as simple as walking around like you see Rob here with an Amsoil hat and a shirt. Uh, and do you want to talk us through that about, you know, people will approach you uh, when yeah. they see you wearing that? Yes. And ask the, you clothing, the clothing pays off so much. Uh, I could be in a grocery store and a person comes up and says, do you know somebody that sells Amsoil? Because <laughs> yeah. I'm wearing the clothing. And I have the logos on my vehicle. And I come out of a parking lot and there's somebody standing beside my car. And I'm thinking, did they hit my car or something? What are they doing? The person said, I've been waiting 10 minutes for you to come out. I don't know where to buy Amzo. That's the biggest problem with Amzo. People don't know where to buy it. So if sure. I see in my clothing or my logo or something somewhere, that's they're waiting to find out where they can buy it from. And yeah. that's when I set them up as a preferred account. And that's a modest investment, too, for a dealer, you know, to, to get a hat and a shirt, maybe a couple of magnets for your vehicle. That, that you probably do all of that for under hundred dollars, and and now you've got a people approaching you. And if you sign up under Rob and I, Rob is going to coach you on how what to say to these people when they approach you, how to how to use that to take that conversation to the place of turning into a solid lead or possibly even a sale, and becoming a regular customer for you. Uh, and it's so it's so just a wonderful thing is just a a great way to start this Amsoil business is, is is to get a hat and a shirt and a magnet for your car, uh, and just let let it come to you. And as you get going, then you can, you know, do do like what Rob is doing at these shows. In fact, let me pop that video on the screen. We're going to see Rob, uh, and this he's talking with a, a mutual friend of ours. This is Gary Porter. He does the uh, <laughs> Snowmobile Sessions uh, uh, a podcast, which is a wonderful podcast. There's a link to it in the description. If you like snowmobiles at all, please visit our mutual friend, Gary Porter. He does a wonderful podcast. He has Let's a take lot a look of at He sure does. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a great guy. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at, at Rob and Gary hanging out at a, at, a, at a show. Let's take a look. No Mobile Sessions Live. Enjoy the ride. It's a journey for life and I'm your ride. Hang on. We got Rob the Oil Guy. He's, we, we say hi to Rob the Oil Guy. Rob the Oil Guy, how are you? I'm good. Are we live today? No, you're not live. It's pre-recorded. Oh, I Memrex. Get, I can't get, yeah, it's Memrex. <laughs> I can't get live to work. How's the show been, bud? You know what? This afternoon, we were swamped. It was stupid how many people was here. Yeah. Shouldn't people have been out on their bicycles or skateboards or something today? <laughs> it was packed. But it's supper time, so it's calmed down, and we get a chance to have something to eat ourselves. That's great. That's mm. great. What do you, uh, what's you? what been the hot seller for you at, at uh, this year's event? Oh, the Interceptor is always one of the biggest sellers. It's a trail riding machine. Uh, it gives you more horsepower, more performance, and longer engine life. So that's what everybody wants. And it's cheaper than buying factory oil. And that's, it outperforms them. That's great. But some of the young kids, they still think they need the racing oil. It's mainly, <laughs> for, racing, mainly for racing applications. The Interceptor is 98% no ash. So with the exhaust valves and all that, you have no problem. But the Dominator is only 91. So it will dirty up your valves if you hit a bumpy trail. Right. Wow. So if you want to change your plugs, you can run it. Yeah. Dominator, but but it's a race oil, right? mainly for racing yeah, applications. Yeah, that's cool. And you hooked me up with some 100 to one premix, which is awesome. Yeah. The Saber. I just like the name Saber. One of these little bottles for five gallons of gas yeah. will give you more protection than what the other brands. Still, I won't mention it. Yeah. At 32 to one, this gives you more protection. Exactly. I'm going to be running that in the uh, Mercury Force this su next summer. And uh, I may be, I will be running my leaf blower in the fall for sure because I want to test that too. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. so you got to start should be good. Soon, don't yeah, you? yeah, I do too. That's right. There so, you go. okay, we will be in touch with that. Thank you for your time, Rob, I the oil guy. Need an extra one. I need an extra one. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink it. Well, maybe I'll start. Hey, if you got 18 bones, 
<laughs> What's that? Here, I'm going to come back and grab it, okay? I'm just going to take a walk. I'll be back to grab that. Thanks, guys. Yeah, the good times at the uh, at the snowmobile show. Yes, yes. Yeah. But uh, but that's the thing is, you know, Rob has been doing this, as you can imagine, for quite a few years. And it's taken a while to build up where you can have that big uh, kiosk and display there. Um, so I guess the point I'm trying to make is if as a new Amsoil dealer, you don't have to start out at that level. You can start off, like we said, you know, wearing a, a hat and a shirt uh, and and getting some conversations going. But over time, if you find that it's working for you, you can maybe start with a small display. And as that grows, uh, get a slightly larger display. And over time, you can get to the point where you've got a display like Rob has got there. Yeah. Um, yeah. 90% and Rob of the time, I only have a 10 by 10 booth. Wow. But that there show, we had 12 dealers working at it. Really? Wow. Nice. Nice. And you wouldn't do all of that if it wasn't profitable, you know, to set up a, a display like that and do all of that. So it's it's very much yeah. worthwhile to do that. Yeah. And, um, and and a lot of yeah. times when we go to some shows, I just open a tailgate and I just have products sitting on the back of the tailgate with a flag up. And I go around and see the show myself and then I sit there in a lawn chair. So and a lot of times some of the shows only charge me five bucks to come like on a cruise night or yeah. a vintage snowball show. Yeah, they'll say they'll say give us some prizes. You can set up a free booth. Yeah, that's cool. So even that's just cool. you know with, with some items on a tailgate and a flag, an Amsoil flag, people will approach you and ask you about Amsoil, and that's an opportunity for you to have that conversation to uh, to to try to sell some Amsoil or sign them up as a. I make a sure I park right beside my buddies that are already all using Amsoil already. Nice, <laughs> and they all have the Amsoil decals on their vintage machines. Sure. So when their friends come over, they send the guy over and say, this is where we get our hands all from. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So that's, you know, and, and if anyone who's thinking about that, and if you, if you enjoy uh, car shows, boat shows, anything like that, snowmobile shows like Rob and I do, it's a wonderful way to monetize that. And just imagine pulling up, putting down the, the tailgate of your pickup and having a few Amsoil items on there, maybe an Amsoil banner flying. Um, yeah. It's a very modest investment. And Rob can coach you on, how to do that and how to handle those conversations as people approach you, how to turn those conversations into something that's productive for everyone. Um, so that, that's what Rob is, is available to you for. And as I said, I do a lot with social media and I've got numerous Facebook groups that have thousands and thousands of, of followers and you can post in there. I can show you how to post, what to post, the frequency, all of the, there, there are guidelines to do this. I'm not saying just do whatever you want in there. But I can show you the exact guidelines of the, how to do it, how not to do it, so you're not on the wrong side of the Facebook algorithm, and so that you're on the, the right side of the, the viewers of the of the the group uh, to get maximum effect and and to get to generate yourself some catalog requests or uh, inquiries about Amsoil. I'll show you exactly how to do it, um, and you don't. It, I encourage you to create your own Facebook page, but and I can show you how to leverage that into what I was just talking about. But you can start this without a Facebook page or any presence on Facebook other than your own personal profile. And I'll coach you through how to at least get started putting your stuff in front of my audience and then show you how to build an audience of your own and how to work that as well. And if you want to get into doing video like we're doing now, I can help you with that. I do a lot with social media uh, and I have muscle car groups, exotic car groups. Uh, and I've also got one called Wheels, Keels, and Snowmobiles, where anything with a, with a motor, anything with a gas motor is fair game. Yeah. And that's got like 15,000 fans. So you can be posting in there right away. And, I'll, and like I say, you can't just do whatever you want in there. I'll, I'll give you the guidelines, but the guidelines are to help you to so that you're not um, getting on the wrong side of the audience or the wrong side of the algorithm. And I'll coach you on all of that. Uh, so when you sign up for Rob and I, you're getting both of us and th things that he and I... Uh, things that he and I both have unique to offer that, that may not be available to you from other Amsoil dealers who would like to sign you up as a dealer. And again, not to knock them, but Rob and I bring each bring something very unique to the table that could be very useful to you as an Amsoil dealer, as a new Amsoil dealer, to help you get started and get some momentum, get off on the right foot. And I'm, I'm the very first one to tell anybody, Amsoil is not a get-rich scheme. But sure. if you're interested in making an extra hundred, five hundred, a thousand, or ten thousand dollars a month month on a part time base, it's available with Amsoil. Yeah, it's actually available to do. Yeah, and you can start with a very modest investment, and you can grow into it. Yes. You know, yes. let's say you you do it, and you've been doing it for a few years. You could get to where you're doing a, easily a few extra thousand dollars a month, yep. and you could get to the point where, hey, maybe I'll do this full time. 
Yes. And, yeah. and if you're like us and you enjoy, enjoy boat shows, car shows, snowmobile shows, how would that be a full-time income where you're, you're just going to shows all the time? <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's Doing a dream. Doing what you like to do. Yeah. Yeah. For people like Rob and I, that's a dream. Yeah. 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 A dream. And come true. has a number of divisions you can go towards. I've got one person. All he does is sign up preferred customers. Mm -hmm. He he offers people the very best possible price to buy the Amazon. He doesn't have any Amazon in his house. He doesn't sell to anybody else. He just gives out catalogs. And then the catalogs are two prices. He tells them sign up, order it themselves. So every month he gets a computer printout saying, here's all the people to order. Here's your commission check. And then I have other groups of people that only do retail and commercial. I got one guy, all he does is small engines. Well, he's into landscape companies. So he goes around the landscape companies and small engines and signs them up. And like a snowmobile shop, if you sign up a snowmobile shop, the Amsoil will give them a 30-day payment plan. They buy $450 worth. They get free shipping. And the reason they like carrying the Amsoil product because Amsoil will put them on their locator. So if you have a small engine shop and they, they buy $450 worth, they you send a picture of them into Amsoil. And anybody within 100 kilometers goes on the Amsoil site and looks for oil, a picture of their shop comes up. Nice. No other oil company does that for their customers. So they like having service that Amsoil offers to them. Yeah, that's a so, huge benefit right there. Yeah, yeah. And if uh, I got one guy, he's got a retail account that orders $50,000 worth four times a year. Wow. He gets he gets 10% for a profit check and 10% towards his commission credits. Yeah, that adds up. That's a part-time job for him. That's amazing. Now, commercial accounts, you only get 5%. Mm -hmm. But a commercial account just doesn't buy a, a case of oil. They, they buy do trims. volumes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, most of the skid steers and backhoes, and we got a lot of guys with uh, logging equipment. <laughs> they take three or four drums to fill that piece of equipment. Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up, too, because there are quite a few different business models for someone who wants to do the Amsoil business. We just talked about... Uh, a few here you know rob does a lot with the shows so if you like shows that's one business model uh if you like to do things online like i do that's another business model and then he talked about the commercial accounts the retail accounts there, there are a number of different business models so yeah. if, you know if there's something that you specialize in or if you have certain types of contacts that that, that that are available to you you know contact us and we'll help tailor a business model uh to turn that into an opportunity for you yep yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Can you I, believe I we've like been working Go ahead. All the categories? Yeah, for sure. You're active in all of the categories. Yes. That's yes. cool. And a person says, the guy you're talking to is a wealthy millionaire. How did you get him to sign up under Amsoil? I said, do you keep your options open on how you make money? Yeah. The guy says, yeah. I said, well, here, here's my email. Send me an email. So before I get home from the show that day, I got an email from that guy saying, what are you talking about how to make money? I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> he's a millionaire but that's why he's a millionaire because he knows how to make money yeah and he's probably got his hand into more than one thing yep yeah different activities for to, to, to generate income for him yep so he's already got some companies that could use the lubricants sure yeah he probably had some good contacts yeah yeah that's cool very cool well yeah if you can believe we've been talking about amsoil here for almost an hour um we're about to wind it down but any any final thoughts rob before we do that you know what? It's a fun business. I worked for Jenna Motors for 30 years and five days. And they came up to me and said, do you want an early retirement? <laughs> and that was on a Monday. Do you want to retire on Friday? I said, I sure do. They said, don't you want to go home talking over with your wife? I said, no, she's not retiring. I am. <laughs> but I had a mother at that time that was sick and needed my help. Yeah. So I took the opportunity. But if it wasn't for the Amsoil business, I wouldn't have been able to have the opportunity to take that option. Yes. And I was 48 years old when I retired from General Motors. Because of the extra money, Amsoil gave me the opportunity to do that. Yeah. And that then gave you more time to work on Amsoil and to, to build that up as well, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. now my daughter wants to know when she can have the company. <laughs> oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's working on it now. So good. So she's already involved. Wonderful. Yeah. Now we've got a comment that's come in. My good friend John Springer Jr. says he's been using semi synthetic oil. Do you have to drain it all out before using the AMS oil? No. No. If you're running petroleum oil and you have 20,000 kilometers on your vehicle, we do recommend to put a flush in. Take mm -hmm. the filter off, 
put a cheap filter on, add a kind of flush, let it run for 20 minutes. That way the oil starts off in a clean engine. If you're running a semi-synthetic, the engine should be partly clean. You shouldn't have to run a flush. Yeah. The people that have 80,000 kilometers in the car and they put 100% synthetic in and they phone me and say, my car is using oil now. I tell them, well, take your filter off, put another filter on because the synthetic oil will naturally clean the inside of the engine and a dirty oil will burn. Hmm. But uh, if you're around a semi-synthetic before, you should be pretty clean. Good, good. Another question I, I meant to ask you, and I'm glad that reminded me of it. Uh, so I've got a 1992 ski Doo Safari. It's got the 377 with the inject oil injection. Yes. It's got injection oil in it. Should I drain that before I put AMSOIL injector oil, or can I put that in with the existing injector oil and if it was the middle of the summer, I would say, yeah, take it out and put AMSOIL in because you'll notice a benefit of AMSOIL right off the bat. But sure. this time of year, no one wants to do that. AMSOIL will mix with any other oil you have. So just top it off and, and keep going. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And a lot one of more people have snowball and they're running AMSOIL and they're in the middle of nowhere and their light comes on. They got to add oil. You can add any brain you want to AMSOIL. It's going to smell a little, but it's not sure. going to do any harm. Won't do any damage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, oh, and then uh, you can't do that on. Sure, sure. Now, John Spranger Jr., who made the comment earlier, he was he he's specifying he was talking about a snowmobile as opposed to a car. As far as and this was the original question: uh, using semi-synthetic oil, does he have to drain it all out before using AMS oil? And he's talking about a snowmobile. No, no. Okay, no. good. No, good. No. And John, we thank you for those questions. By the way, we really appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, John's a good friend of mine, and we he's been with the podcast from the very beginning. Uh, and we've been corresponding from the very beginning as friends and uh, finally had a chance to meet him. He's out in Wisconsin, but he was uh, over the holidays. He was visiting family here in Vermont and uh, he wasn't too far away. So we got together and had lunch one day, had a really nice visit. I yeah, had a chance to meet him and the missus and we had a really good time. Whereabouts in Wisconsin is he from? Eland. Eland, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm heading to cool. Duluth this year. Duluth. Oh, nice. Superior, Wisconsin. Sure, is that an event or something? Or Am Amsel 50th anniversary party. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Well, good. That sounds like a great time. Yeah. So cool. So unless there are any final thoughts here, we're going to give the last word as always to Amsoil. We've got a little Amsoil video that Rob and I made a few months ago. Any Anything else before we transition to that? Or No, that's a good video. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that was fun to make. Yeah, yeah that was fun. Well, cool. Well, thank you everyone for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate your coming on and being a viewer. And we thank Rob for being here tonight. And uh, thank everyone who's either considering purchasing Amsoil uh, under Rob and I or becoming a dealer. Uh, and also we thank the people who have been doing that along as well. We thank you so very much for that. And uh, yeah, have a have wonderful a day, evening. Mike. All right. You too. Take care. Hello, everyone. This is Rob and Mike. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing good. Mike, yourself? Very well. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Now, uh, today, we're going to be talking about AMSOIL. And uh, in a few moments, we're going to show you how you can get the deepest discounts, free shipping, and free gifts when you order your AMSOIL products through us. But first, I'm going to ask Rob to give you a quick description of what AMSOIL is and why you should consider using AMSOIL products in your motorized vehicles. Thanks, Mike. AMSOIL is 100% synthetic oil. Everybody uses AMSOIL for a different reason. Some people like the benefits that AMSOIL is warranty for 25,000 miles or one year. The reason we can do that is because AMSOIL doesn't oxidize. It doesn't form the usual carbons, gums, sludges like petroleum oils do. That's why we can keep it in the engines longer. Petroleum oils never do wear out. They oxidize themselves. That's why they have to be changed at 3,000 kilometers. And AMSOIL likes the benefit that you only have to change the oil once a year. That saves some money. Some of the people like the benefit of AMSOIL is it's a slipperier type lube. By having a slipperier type lube, it cuts down friction and drag. By less friction and drag, engines run 20 to 50 degrees cooler, better gas mileage. Now, Amsoil says 25% more protection than the industry requires is in the Amsoil bottles. My average customer gets about 10% increase in gas mileage. That's a big savings. Yeah. And by cutting down friction and drag, for every 10 degrees you cut down the friction and drag, doubles the life of the engine. So by having the engine run cooler, it makes it last longer. Some people like the benefit of the range of the Amsoil. Amsoil's flash point is 425 degrees, and it pours at 50 below zero. Wow. If you ever try petroleum oil when it's 10 below, it turns to the honey. And yeah. in the summertime, petroleum oil thins out, and once, once it thins out, that's when it starts breaking down. 
So AMSO is an all-season oil, can give your better gas mileage, longer engine life, less maintenance. It ends up being cheaper over a year's time running AMSO than it is petroleum oils. That's amazing. That's amazing. And AMSO is, is available for pretty much any motorized vehicle, uh, anything, from, anything from lawn equipment, cars, trucks, boats, ATVs, motorcycles, snowmobiles. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people phone me up and say, well, what's the benefit of our gear loop? Exactly what I told you about the engine oil. It pours in cold weather. It runs cooler, makes the equipment last longer. And they say, well, it's the benefit of the small engine. Same thing. Makes the engine run cooler, last longer, better performance. So it saves on all the applications that AMSO has available. Wonderful, wonderful. So, yeah, let's uh, let's talk now. Uh, hopefully this has convinced people uh, to think about maybe joining us in the AMSOIL experience. Let's talk about some of the discounts and free shipping and how that all happens. I'm going to pop a, a graphic on the screen. And, uh, yeah, by all means, if you want to talk talk people through how this preferred customer program works. AMSOIL has a number of different programs. One of our main ones is a catalog customer where somebody can order directly out of our catalog. If they order out of the catalog, they order $100 worth, AMSOIL ship it right to their house. But our best program is our preferred customer. For only $10 for six months, you become a preferred customer, you save 25% on all the product. You order $100 worth, they're going to give you free shipping. Um, you don't have to order a whole case. You can mix and match. Say you want four bottles of small engine, seven bottles of 5W30, and a couple of gear loops. You can mix and match. You can order one bottle at a time if you want. There's no minimums, no maximums. By being a preferred customer, you save over 25% on all the products you're going to buy. Amsoil sends you extra gifts, uh, a $5 gift certificate on your birthday, $5 when you renew, renew your account, and stuff like that. So it's a good way to save on some of the products you want to buy. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it's an incredible value. And this is the, the deepest level of discount that anyone can get when ordering Amsoil. Is that correct? It is. It is. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's take people through the step-by-step the -step experience of, of placing an Amsoil order. Then that would include signing up for the preferred customer discount, or sorry, preferred customer program so they can receive those deepest levels of discount. So let's go to the website. This is what the website's going to look at look like. These are some screenshots. If you Once you go to Amsoil.com, there's a link in the description, or you can just type that into a browser, Amsoil.com. This is the page you land on. At the upper corner of the page there, you see how I've circled in red. That is the link to click, the Join Now link. That will take you to the Preferred Customer Program page where you can take advantage of all these discounts and free shipping and everything that we've just been talking about. This is what that page looks like. In the lower right, you're going to click Join Now. This will pop up. You select the duration you'd like, whether it's six months or 12 months, and click Add to Cart. Now, once this, this uh, pop-up goes away, you'll be back on the main page. And the upper left, you'll see where I've got that red arrow. It says Shop. Now you can start shopping for products, and on your very first order, you're going to get these discounts and the free shipping as long as it's over $100. You'll get all of these benefits right away. So once you click shop, it's going to take you to uh, some product, the product page. There's different types of oils, lubricants, so on and so forth. For the benefit of this exercise we're doing now, I'm just going to click motor oil. It shows different types of motor oil. Let's click gasoline. Now this takes us to an item. It's uh, their synthetic motor oil. And you can see the item there, and there's choices for different viscosities. But take a look at the price. Let's take a closer look. Let's zoom in. Uh, but if you've joined the preferred customer program first, you're going to automatically get the deepest levels of discount. That's what we're looking at here. You're saving $3.80 on that quart of oil. Instead of paying $16.29, you're now paying, paying $12.49 for that quart of oil. That is the deepest level of discount you can possibly get. And then uh, you just add the, the, the quantity that you'd like. You select any other items that you're thinking about, add them to the cart. And once you uh, click add to cart for the final time, you're going to see this come up at the top of the screen. It's going to show your items and your, your um, the total that you're at so far. <coughs> <clears throat> pardon me and then uh, you just click view cart in the upper right and that'll take you to your cart uh, take a close look here at the upper right that blue box shows that you're getting free shipping you're eligible for free shipping on this order because it's over a hundred dollars that little yellow box shows that you've got the preferred customer membership on your order that gives you the deepest levels of discounts for the next six to 12 months and then below that you've got the, the items that have been selected i just for the exercise here i selected nine quarts of this signature series but that brings us up over a hundred dollars for the free shipping we're saving 34 dollars and 20 cents and if you're ready to to finish you click check out now and that takes you uh to this screen here if you haven't signed up with an Amsoil account at this point, just click in the lower right to create an account, create a new account. It's going to ask you for some basic information, a name and those types of things. Now, let's take a closer look. You'll see this gray shaded box. This is a very important box. This is going to ask you if someone has referred you to Amsoil. And if so, please enter my name. My name is Mike Lapierre. It's spelled right there on the screen for the correct spelling. And also the referral number, 304-555-94. That's how um, you make sure that Rob and I get credit for this. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I have signed up for Amsoil under Rob. So when you order using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. 
So if you enjoy these podcasts that we're doing, this is a wonderful way to support the podcast because when you order uh, using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. And the commissions I make go directly toward offsetting the cost of doing this pod- these podcasts. So I thank you in advance for that, for using my referral number. I very much appreciate it. Uh, and once you've done that, you just go into the next screen to enter your payment information and you're done. Now, once you've entered, once you've placed your order, that's over $100, uh, and that, that order includes your AMSOIL Preferred Customer Program, you are now eligible to get a free DVD from myself. Now, this is going to be either a muscle car DVD or a vintage snowmobile DVD. Uh, use the email address on the screen, wkspodcasts at gmail.com. Send me an email. Let me know which email. I'm sorry. Let me know which DVD you would like me to send you, the muscle car or the uh, uh, vintage snowmobile DVD, and I'll get that right out to you. As you're typing in that that email in the subject line, be sure and type in capital letters, free DVD requests. So it stands out as I'm checking my email, and we'll get that right out to you. So I guess the last thing, Rob, that we wanted to talk about is uh, if someone is considering Amsoil as a business opportunity. Um, yeah, yes. If anybody has a retail or a commercial account and they would like to buy directly from Amsoil, just send Mike a line. He'll show you how to set up and you can buy directly from Amsoil. But if you are interested in starting your own part-time business, a part-time business that can grow into a full-time income, Mike and I will show you the Amsoil marketing plan. Amsoil has a large selection of products that cover almost every application. So it doesn't matter if you're into snowmobile, boating, or ATV, or, or hot rods. We have an oil for every application. It's a fun type business that I really enjoy doing. Where else can I go and have fun and make money doing it? And Mike and I are here to help you all the way along if you need any help on how to promote or, or to find new accounts. We're here to help you. For sure, for sure. So when you sign up under that uh, that number, this 304-55594, you're getting Rob and I as a team. Now, Rob has been doing Amsoil for 40 years. Can you believe that? 40 years. So he knows every aspect of this business, and he knows all of the ins and outs of the products. So he'll be able to help you with any kind of product questions or any kind of questions to show you the different business models that you can do with Amsoil. And then the other thing that you get when you sign up under me is I've got a strong background in social media. So if you need some coaching on how to generate Amsoil leads using Facebook and YouTube, I'm happy to coach you with that when you sign up under Rob and I. Uh, you get both of us as a team uh, to help you, to coach you, to support you, whatever you need to get you, get you off and running with this business and having fun with it. It's like Rob said, it's enorm- an enormous amount of fun. If you're like Rob and I and you enjoy going to any kind of you know boat shows, car shows, motorcycle shows, snowmobile shows, anything with a motor, you like going to those shows, those events, those races, this is a great way to turn that into a, 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 a income opportunity for you. Yes, yes. And just by wearing my Amsoil hat at one of these events, people come up and ask me about Amsoil. People don't, people don't know where to buy it, and I'm there to help them, show them where they can buy the product. Perfect, perfect. Well, cool, cool. Well, this is great. Uh, any final thoughts, Rob, before we wrap it up? Amsoil's a fun business. Amsoil's been around since 1968. You know, it was the first synthetic oil to be AI approved. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's very early in the game, too, isn't it? Yes. For sure. Well, good. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for viewing. Hopefully, we've gotten you excited as excited as we are about the Amsoil products. We'd love it if you could enjoy if you could join us either uh, as someone who uses the Amsoil products or to join the Amsoil team uh, as a business opportunity. And we thank you so much for viewing. Have a great day. You have a good day.